Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. Welcome back to our MCAT prep series. Today, we are unraveling the electrifying world of electrostatics. Grab your notebooks and let's get charged up. First things first, the fundamental unit of electric charge is the coulomb. Protons and electrons, the tiny particles inside an atom, carry this charge. Protons will have it as a positive charge, and electrons will have it as a negative charge. Both possess the fundamental unit of charge, which is approximately 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. But remember, despite having the same magnitude of charge, protons and electrons differ greatly in mass. Now, just like relationships, opposites attract in the world of charges. So a positive proton and a negative electron will attract each other, moving towards the center. On the other hand, similar charges, like two protons or two electrons, they will repel each other and move away from each other. They just can't stand to be near one another. Next, let's chat about conductors and insulators. Conductors like copper or gold allow for free and uniform passages of electrons when they are charged. They're like the highways for electron traffic. We see electrons moving from one end to the other, but really it's just a slosh of electrons all over the place, just bumping into each other and pushing each other around. Unlike in an insulator, where they resist the movement of charge, they have localized areas of charge that do not distribute over the surface. For example, rubber or wood is a good insulator, which is why it's used for the handles of tools that work with electricity. Now, into the clickbaity title of Coulomb's Law. Coulomb's Law tells us that the magnitude of the electrostatic force between two charges, the force vector, points along the line connecting centers of two charges. The closer the charges, the stronger the forces, and vice versa. So what does that mean in equations? Because blah, right? The force of two charges interacting is equal to this constant K times the charge on one, Q1, times the charge on the other, Q2, all divided by radius squared. So we can see if we've got Q1 here, Q2 here, and the radius, we would just need to square the value of the radius, multiply these together, and add a K, and then we've got our answer. But there's more we need to know here, because every charge generates an electric field, which can exert forces on other charges. We represent this with field lines. These lines show the activity of a positive test charge. We represent this with field lines. These lines show the activity of a positive test charge, moving away from a positive charge and moving toward a negative charge. Similar to how a compass needle aligns from north to south, the field is stronger when the field lines are closer together. An important equation you need to know related to this electric field is the force on the test charge divided by the magnitude of the charge, written as F sub E divided by Q, which this is also equal to K over big Q over R squared. And we just figured this out by rearranging using this equation here. So we can just plug that right on in. Now let's put our knowledge to the test or the practice problem. Suppose we have two charges. Charge one is positive two coulombs and charge two is negative three coulombs. And they are separated by a distance of one meter. What is the magnitude and direction of the electrostatic force between them? Well, let's solve this. What was our force equation? We knew that force equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. We're just going to leave K because we don't want to deal with that number. So we're going to say force equals 2 times negative 3 divided by 1. And these are all absolute valued. So this is going to equal 6 newtons. And then if we wanted to draw in these field lines, like I said, we're going to go from positive to negative. So we're going to draw those in from the positive charge moving towards the negative charge. Now you've done it. You've mastered Coulomb's Law, one of the most important important equations on the MCAT to truly, deeply understand. Thank you so much for watching this video. You are one step closer to absolutely crushing the chem phys section, and I will see you next time.